This one relates back to my time in the Air Force when I actually did serve on a squadron of Neptunes in Townsville in Queensland. Ten squadron. <laughs> We'd flown on up from Townsville to patrol the Northern Gulf. It was just a routine flight and we felt lazy after lunch. With a pale blue sky above us and an azure sea below, I just felt like turning turtle, napping out while things were slow. I remember that the Beatles came across the intercom, sang a song from Sergeant Peppers of some Lonely Hearts Club band. I was down there in the nose cone, strapped and buckled to my seat feeling warm and safe and cosy in the tropics in the heat. While down in Carpentaria the water was sublime, we'd flown this great expanse before a hundred thousand times. Looking out for those illegals, Indonesian fishing boats, fishing in our charted waters, stealing fish from round our coast. There were seven in the Neptune, we were short on crew that day, just the captain and co-pilot and a navigator, Ray. The rad tech keeping cover on the sonar, Jezebel. The others taking turns on Mad, the stinger in the tail. While I was the observer and I should have been alert, keeping watch on the horizon, there was nothing to report. I could hear the others mumble through the sleepy afternoon. Then a bell went off, the snifter, and it galvanised the crew. The captain ordered sonar, and we blasted off a buoy. Flew on a dozen miles or so, then dropped another toy. The Jezebel was chattering and Mad was cutting in. Its anomaly detection showed a fish, but made of tin. I scanned to the horizon, but saw nothing in my view. Reported to the captain, he barked orders to the crew. The rad tech on the Jezebel yelled, Whoopee! Listen, bub. I'm reading off a Russian code. We've got ourselves a sub. I felt the nose begin to dip and roll toward the port. It looked like we were going down to check the Russian out, when suddenly a water spout appeared from down below. I yelled up through the intercom, Missile! Missile! Go! It only seemed a moment that I braced myself, and then the nose cone shattered, opened up and left me hanging there. The wind was like a howling gale and took my breath away. I hit the buckles, twisted round and made for the crawlway. They pulled me through the tunnel, bleeding cuts across my face. What happened? Are we going in? No one was game to say. The pilot pulled back on the stick and took her round to port. The missile just glanced off us, or we wouldn't be here, sport. I heard the captain rage and swear across the intercom, that bastard's got it coming. He won't know where it's coming from. We're not supposed to fire in them, the UN won't be chuffed. But after that, I think he knows that all the bets are off. The netty brought its nose around and set off in pursuit. We dropped two other sonar boys. The sub was heading out. At just above a thousand feet, he said, just let her rip and dropped a dozen depth charges on that Russian ship. The water just erupted in an agony of white. A swirling burst of bubbles said our targeting was right. And then a long black shape had leapt nose first up from the sea. We saw it had a broken back. It sank there instantly. We limped our way to Catherine and landed in the gloom. A host of men in suits were there, they shut us in a room. Then all of us were made to sign some forms before we left, headed the Official Secrets Act. They scared us half to death. I think that I can tell you now, it's 40 years this year, that in the placid waters of Gulf Carpentaria, there lies a sunken, rusted wreck, a hammer's sickle crest. It took on a single Neptune there, and well, you know the rest. <laughs>